Hello everyone. Welcome to this game from the bronze match of the War of the Ring 2023 World Tournament. I am playing Saved by Him, and we both lost in the main bracket, but because we made it to the semifinals, we we're playing a bronze match. So we um, Saved by Him was a higher seed, and so they chose to play as free people. And you will see what an exciting game we're in that you're in store for. Here we go. So I allocated three eyes at the beginning of the game, and uh, we decided that uh, free people would get two tokens. So I allocate three eyes, free people gets two tokens, and since we're playing um, a best of three match, we'll use the same uh, two tokens for next match. So here we go. I allocate three eyes, roll none, and you can see that uh, I got Worm Tongue and Hill Trolls. They got Help Unlook for and Mithril Coat and Sting, and uh, they start by mustering the Elves towards war, and I draw a strategy card because there's nothing that uh, that I can play right away. I mean, I could play Hill Trolls, but I'd rather just draw and see what I get. I should also note that uh, they rolled no movement, so obviously that is uh, bad luck for them. They got a lot of mustering, but... Really not not such a good roll for them. Quite bad. Uh, I only rolled one muster, which, you know, if I'm only rolling three dice, that's probably about what we'd expect. So interestingly, they chose to um, draw, um, draw a strategy card instead of using their token. They did have a card draw token. And um, if they had done the card draw token, they could have maybe gotten Book of Mazar Bowl and then separated companions with a ring. That might have been an option. Um, and then they could have gotten the dwarves to war on turn one and maybe made more efficient use of um, of these muster dice at the beginning of the game. Who could they have, So where could they have separated? One, two, three. So if they separate to Buckland with Strider, something like that, and a level two companion like Legolas, maybe. If Legolas and Strider go to Buckland, then they can go one, two, three. Hmm. Just wondering what's the right what's the right place to go and still put Strider in position to be able to get crowned quickly? Yeah, it's not great because if you separate to Buckland then you can go one, two, three to Endwaith, but then, or and Nedwaith, but then you're still one, two, three, four from Dol Amroth. So that's not, that's not great. Yeah, so I guess Book of Mazar Bowl with no fellowship movement is, is not ideal. Because if you had one fellowship movement, then you could separate one, two, three to to South Arid Luin, and then that would be four movement. And then you could go one, two, three to Druith IR, and then into Dol Amroth. Yeah. All right. So slow start for military, slow start for the Fellowship both ways. Uh, okay. But still, Book of Mazar Bowl can be useful. You can certainly, it can be useful to move companions around, can be useful to get the doors to war, even if it's not happening turn one. All right, I move an army from Baradur to Gorgoroth, and then they muster Gondor one towards war. I move my army from Gorgoroth to Mornon. Maybe I'm going to go up to attack the Woodland Realm do area. Maybe I'm just going to go after um, Gondor. And then um, they muster the elves one more towards war, and I get Isengard to war. So they've obviously mustered both Gondor and the elves quite close to war, so maybe it would be better to uh, muster Sauron to war, so that in case I roll no musters, these arm but a lot of army movements, these armies can start attacking places. Um, but I guess I didn't assume that they would get somebody to war, so better to be more likely to get my my uh, my minion with Saruman. So I end up mustering Isengard to war and just hope that I'm going to roll more musters. All right. They draw Kyrdan's ships and there's another way. Okay, so nice that they got the elves close to war having drawn Kyrdan's. Um, and if I even if I have an early Corsairs, they, they'll be able to get the elves to war. 
All right, so I allocate one eye, roll two more, uh, and then they get still only one movement. So not not really what they want to be seeing. Um, all right, so, but I got my one muster, and that will at least let me get Saruman. They draw a uh, character card. Interesting. So th using the token. So that was that was using the token. All right. They uh, I move armies more and on to Dagger Lad. I definitely wanted some army movement to be able to get Nern to Gorgoroth and Gorgoroth to minus Morgul, but because I don't have any, um, I didn't roll any army movement. That's just how it goes. All right. They muster the elves all the way to war. Okay. And now the Woodland Realm is not looking particularly tempting. It's going to take me a long time to get up there, and they're going to have plenty of time to muster before I arrive. So I think I'm just going to go after Gondor. All right. I try and play Worm Tongue, which is illegal because I do not yet have Saruman in play. I'm waiting to muster Saruman until they're down to only a single Will of the West so that there's no way they can get Gandalf turn two. Uh, so I take that back and instead I just move armies and I go dagger lad to North Athelion, making it clear that I'm going after Gondor, which may be temporary. Like you'll see my next move. I probably should have done my other move sooner. Um, but it's hard to know for sure. All right. They get, uh, an elven elite in Lorien, certainly a reasonable place that I might attack someday. And, um, and then I move Nazgul because I can't attack with this army in North Athelion. And, uh, you know, where else am I going to, what else am I going to do with that character die? I have no cards that I can play. And, uh, you know, I just, I don't know what else to do with it. So I'm going after my printer is, hold on. My printer really wanted to calibrate itself right at that moment. All right, it will be done soon. Okay, so, uh, sorry about that. So I end up using this character die to move Nazgul around because I just don't know what else to do with it. I was wary of using the muster to get Saruman right away because they could separate Gandalf and get, get Gandalf right away. It seems like they're going a military strategy. So, um... All right, I end up putting a Nazgul in Nurn so that next time I can walk Nurn to Gorgoroth and Gorgoroth to minus Morgul if I end up rolling a whole bunch of character dice again. All right, and I'm going to focus on Gondor first. So they play Caridon's ships. They uh, redraw Fearfire Foes. Very flexible. So they can they can get both the North and the Dwarves to war pretty fast. And, um, and then... And they play the Elves in Pelargir, I guess, just because... Um, what else, what else could they play there? And they want to keep cycling strategy cards and Gandalf is guide. So that's good. All right. So I get Saruman now, and then they separate, they separate Strider, Legolas, Gimli, Boromir, and Merry all to Moria. So, um, I will now reveal that, uh, Jason and I, uh, saved by him, Jason and I agreed that uh, we would make an attempt, a military attempt. So both both, uh, both games um, were going to start the same way. And the rules were Shadow allocates three eyes turn one, and um, the free people player must separate at least nine hit points of companions. This is actually 10 hit points, but you must separate at least nine hit points of companions uh, nine levels of companions before moving the fellowship once. So before you move the fellowship, you have to at least separate companions. So um, th the intent is to show that if the free people player is focused on military from the beginning of the game, they have some chances to win even with a good shadow player and a good shadow defense. So they got a pretty slow start. Like I didn't get two musters turn one, but they got no movement. So this is definitely a slow and no character movement. They couldn't separate companions. So they got a very slow start. Um, yeah. So it's just, that's how it goes sometimes. But honestly, if this were 
a quote normal game where they were trying to move the fellowship, it would also be a very slow start. They only got a single movement. Um, so in two turns. So that's just, you know, a little bit of bad luck. Sometimes you don't get that much movement. Um, you know, interestingly, if they had um, used a ring last round to separate companions and they had used um, Book of Mazarbal, they could have crowned Aragorn this turn with another ring in that Will of the West or having drawn into Fearfire Foes, uh, Fearfire Foes. So, you know, I think that would have been a little risky to do, but if you see that you have Book of Mazarbal and you're willing to use it to move companions around, that is something to consider. It is a little tricky um, last round because they would have had to give me a ring and then I would have been able to get Saruman uh, turn one as a result. So probably does not make sense. I don't think that's a mistake on their part, but um, it's just it was just a bad, really bad turn one action roll. Okay, so anyway, that's that's the rules. The rules are separate nine levels worth of companions before moving the fellowship. Uh, Shadow will allocate three eyes, turn one, and free people will get two tokens. And I didn't have to allocate any eyes turn two uh, because, you know, I knew that we were playing a military game, but it just felt like, you know, there was nothing that showed like if you're just looking at this game from the outside, there was nothing that showed that free people was going to do this. So I just felt like it was more more fair and more fun to to allocate another eye, um, just to sort of represent that uncertainty that Shadow would have in a normal situation where you wouldn't know in advance. So Shadow in this case has I have an even more advantage than you would normally if free people were trying a strategy like this, because like Hill Trolls, I knew that I was going to save. I drew this turn one. Maybe I would have played it turn one. I mean, Sauron wasn't at war, so I couldn't have. But like if I had rolled some musters and had a bunch of Palantirs, maybe I would have played it. Obviously, if I know that I'm doing, uh, trying to defend against free people military shenanigans, uh, I'm going to save Hill Trolls. It's a very good defensive card. Um, so, okay. Anyway, they separate companions. That's how it goes. So I'm rolling eight dice to their four. I discard Worm Tongue because it's my weakest card. And uh, what do they get? So they get rid of Help Unlooked For. That's interesting. I They're saving all of these, um, a lot of good healing cards for the Fellowship. And I guess they're thinking they still want to someday um, go after... Uh, try and destroy the ring. It's good to have some threat of that. And if you keep these good healing cards, then that can be really nice. I think I might have discarded Kindred of Glorfindel instead of Help Unlooked For. Um, but, okay. Now that they're going military, I'm not going to allocate any eyes. They didn't move last round, so I don't have to allocate any eyes. I'm not going to if I see them separate that many companions. All right, so I roll none, and they get three movement. So, um, you know, obviously they would have preferred to get uh, a Will of the West so that Aragorn could get crowned. Um, but you'd need two movement plus Will of the West, though they do have Book of Mazarbal and Fear Fire Foes. So um, they're going to be able to get their companions into position. They can also move a couple times, and that's not bad. Um, you know, my military is a little slow. It's not horrible, but it's definitely not like super fast. And so if you can get three free movement, even four with a ring, maybe that's worth it. They didn't roll any um, musters. And so like I could maybe sneak into Woodland Realm, even though the elves are at war. Um, I'm a little wary of leaving Dol Golder totally open. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, they're a little sad. Um, I, I'm a little sad also because I didn't roll two musters. If I had gotten two musters, I could have gotten the Witch King this turn. But at least I got one muster. So Sauron is now at war and now I can get my um, my armies into position. All right. So I say, let's use make use of that Nazgul just so I feel good. So the I did roll some character dice and I am using that Nazgul from, to move the army from Nern to Gorgoroth because I want to get 
uh, Gondor surrounded and get my armies into position before launching this attack. Because if I, um, one idea is, you know, leave some armies behind in Mordor. Um, but I drew, um, I'm, I drew mustering of long planned war. So my plan is let's empty Mordor. Let's, uh, maybe bait free people to try and get into Mordor. And then I'll still have mustering of long planned war to defend, to defend Mordor, assuming I get hopefully next round three musters, so that I can get the Witch King and the Southrons and Easterlings to war. We'll see. I am a little low on musters myself right now. All right. So I move an army from Nern to Gorgoroth using a character die, which is very rare. That is a rare move, a vintage rare move. Okay. Now they, they pass and uh, I move armies again, this time Far Harad to Near Harad, Gorgoroth to Minus Morgul. I'm just surrounding... Uh, Gondor, and then I go minus Morgul to South Athelion and near Harad to West Harondor. Okay. Um, they, oh, right. And I would have really loved um, if I could have gotten two musters because uh, I have Black Captain Commands and the Elves are at War, so I could have, it could have made better use of my Palantirs. All right. They play Kindred of Glorfindel to cycle into a bunch of cards. They get Scouts and Swords and Ariad, or I'm guessing they're just getting rid of Swords and Ariad. No, they got rid of Bilbo Song there. Interesting. You know, I'm a little surprised by this play. Like, why not... Um, why not move your characters and then play Fearfire Foes with the Palantir so that now the North is at war? Well, there's no real rush to play Kindred of Glorfindel. What are you trying to cycle into? You end up discarding cards faster. So it's not that big of a deal to discard, but but still, uh, I would think I would want I would want to get these units in position. All right. Uh, maybe they're just planning on moving three times. All right. So I attack as Gilead. I want to be prepared to you know, besiege Minas Tirith so that it's hard for Aragorn to get crowned and also escape. I get, um, I get only one hit and, um, now, uh, Gondor's at war and very, uh, wisely, uh, Jason did not play scouts because they just want me to not get enough sixes. And now they're going to have a scouts when I try and clean up that leftover army unit. So, um, that was a nice, nice waiting on, on the use of scouts. And I attacked by the way, from South Athelion, anticipating that this, these units are not going to go back to Minas Tirith and instead they're going to stick around and just try and sneak into Mordor or just generally cause trouble. So I'm, I'm going to try and get rid of th that, those units fully if I can. Um, so I get one hit, they get one back and then they retreat to Dead Marshes. All right. And now, um, they move uh, from Lorien to Dimril Dale, which is a serious threat against Moria because um, it looks like I don't have any way to reinforce it. That said, knowing that they were going for military victory, I did not leave myself open. Um, I have Hill Trolls. I also... Earlier in the round, I could have used army movement to move from South uh, um, Dunland to North Dunland or North Dunland to uh, Moria. So, um, you know, it's tricky using this character die like this. Uh, it definitely threatens to take Moria right away. And they have a whole bunch of companions there. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but I think it's probably a little premature. Because the problem is, even if you take Moria, then I'm going to have time to muster up and retake it back, probably. I mean, maybe I left myself <clears throat> totally defenseless, right? Like maybe you look at this and say Shadow has left themselves defenseless. They don't have any Elven Rings. They don't have any Musters. They just have Palantirs. I can go after Moria right now. They've made a mistake. But... Uh, yeah, I think, I think I didn't make a mistake and either I have shout on Misty Mountain or I have Ulog High or I have in, in this case, what I do have, which is Rage of the Dunlinix. So, um, I end up having a productive use of this Palantir 
And uh, I'm very happy to see this move as free people because, I mean, a shadow, because uh, I don't want them moving for free. Like, yeah, my military, I have some time. They did corruption damage to themselves by separating all these companions. But I do need to make progress on military and keep the fellowship not going too fast. All right. Anyway, so I play Rage of the Dunlindings. I move from South Dunland into uh, Moria and recruit two into Moria. So that's now going to be you know, possible for them to take still, but um, definitely much harder. Um, so at this point, they move the fellowship and uh, and I attack into Minas Tirith because um, they don't have any musters and maybe they don't have guards of the Citadel yet. And what else am I going to do with this Palantir? I want to play Denethor's Folly. So I have to have Minas Tirith under siege. So for all those reasons, while I want to take care of this guy in Dead Marshes, I'm going to um, besiege Minas Tirith first. All right, so um, now they move companions. Legolas joins the force in Dimrald Dale. Um, Merry and Boromir and Aragorn or and Strider come to Eastamnet. And, you know, they can now get to Pelargir. I'm a little worried about that. I don't have an army next to Pelargir to attack in right away. And I can't let this army leave North Athelion entirely until this guy in Dead Marshes is defeated. So... You know, maybe if I were playing from the very beginning of the game that they were doing um, free people military, maybe instead of having like one unit, like one extra unit here, maybe I just leave a unit in minus Morgul and uh, Morinon. But I think because I had mustering of long planned war, I thought to myself, it's okay to empty it out. Now I'm like, it's a little annoying to, to have to deal with this guy. It's going to waste some of my attacks. And if I had at least one unit in Morinon and minus Morgul, I wouldn't be so worried about them walking in. All right, anyway, Denethor's Folly, that's fine. All right, Worn with Sauron Toil, not so useful. Return to Valinor. I'm very happy to see Deadly Strife. I have to find the right time to use it because uh, generally I want to be cautious with my play. All right, so they end up discarding Mithril Coat and Sting and I guess Swords and Eriador. Yeah, which is interesting because they actually have um, they have Book of Mazarbal and they have Fearfire Foes. So both the North and the Dwarves are going to be at war. And then if you look at this army from um, Ered Luin and the Shire, you can end up like that. You can end up collecting quite a few units and either going after um, Moria or going after Mount Gundabad. So. It's hard to know what to get rid of. Maybe you get rid of one of the scouts. Obviously, there's another way is great for healing, but also heroic death is incredibly powerful when you have companions on the board. So, you know, it's not great to lose a scouts. I don't know. This is this is definitely a tough call of what what to get rid of. But but part of me means like like last turn you could have. You could have got. You could have have already played Fear Fire Foes last round. You could have moved companions and then um, and then Fear Fire Foes. I guess I guess they were going after Moria. They thought that I was leaving it open as a possibility, um, and I guess I sort of baited them into it. But yeah, I wasn't. I wouldn't have left that open. I wouldn't have spent. I wouldn't have spent my all of my army movements without being able to defend more if I didn't have some way of defending it. Okay, moving on. Um, they I have to allocate one eye since they moved, and I roll no more. That's good for me. And uh, okay, so at least they get they get their will of the west and character movement. So this is going to be I think a pretty nice turn for them, assuming they can get Aragorn into Pilar gear before I have a chance to attack it. So. Uh, they start by playing Fearfire Foes. They get Gimli to the Shire. They get Aragorn, Str or Strider, Boromir, and Merry to Pelargir. The North goes straight to war. And they redraw Faramir's Rangers. Okay, could be useful. And now I know that I, I just have to take care of this unit in Dead Marshes. They almost certainly have a Scouts, but all right. I, maybe they don't. I'll try. Let's see what happens. Um, I don't play a card and then they play scouts. So I'm happy to see Spirit of Mordor. Like Spirit of Mordor actually could have hurt Moria. So 
I was a little worried actually about Spirit of Mordor against Moria. And so I wonder if they had, could have used um, Grimbjorn. Um, it does, it is a little bit of a mind game because it makes me think that they don't have a second Scouts right now because they played what seems like to me the better Scouts. Um, like if they had Grimbjorn and. Um, spirit of mordor i might have assumed that they would play grimbjorn so i could infer that they don't have grimbjorn <laughs> anyway uh i'm not going to risk attacking into eastern emin wheel without a um swarm of bats because if they had a second scout which they do then they can re they can scout to dagger lad and then use this army movement to go straight into Mornon. and i just i just don't want to give them any um strongholds for free they should have to work for it all right, so they crown Aragorn. I'm sure they're happy to see that. The Southrons and Easterlings are not at war yet, so this is not a huge threat. And um, and they still even have an extra muster to be able to um, muster in Pelargir, and they have a character die to be able to move the Fellowship once. So this is, this is I think, a pretty perfect role for them, for what they want to do. Maybe they want more musters and not move the Fellowship. I'm not sure. All right, I get Southrons and Easterlings toward war. They pass. And now, at this moment, now that the Southrons and Easterlings are at war, they play Grey Company. Okay, getting more cards. I would have, I would have been tempted just to move. I guess they're a little worried that that um, Aragorn's going to get, you know, hurt a bunch. But yeah, I'm maybe just muster in Pilar gear normally. Okay. Anyway, they um, now have an extra hit point in Pilar Gear. It is nice to be able to use a character die to get extra hit points. And they drew two cards. Guards of the Citadel, I'm sure they're happy to see. And Imber Hill of Dol Amroth, they're happy to see. So those are those are perfectly good cards to draw. And of course, I get the Witch King now. And um, then play Musterings of Long Planned War. Because I need to... I want to try and take care of this person in Eastern Emin Wheel. Uh, but I also need to cover Morinon. So, and I do have, um, Black Captain Command. So even though I've been rolling some Palantirs, I've been able to make pretty efficient use of them. They attack out of Pilar gear. I am quite surprised by that. I mean, on one hand, it's, it's nice to just be out and about and, uh, just have more places where you can retreat and go. But on the other hand, don't you want to muster more? Like the Gondorian force pool, there's still like a lot more mustering that you could do. And then you could end up mustering a pretty big army. I guess they just don't want to get trapped in. And they do have Faramir's Rangers. So if I let them sit in Osgiliath, then uh, that would be nice for them. Okay, so um, they... Completely annihilate Osgiliath, and my lone orc does nothing. Is very scared of, of Aragorn and Boromir and Merry. Uh, and, uh, and then I play Black Captain Commands. So I do not want to let them sit in Osgiliath. Because they have no dice left, I am not worried about scouts here. Because even if they have scouts and they scouts to South Athelion, I have another attack. And I have 11 hit points to their six. So once they're kicked out of Osgiliath... I can, I can attack, if they go to South Athelion, I can attack in South Athelion. So things would have to go pretty seriously wrong for me to not be able to um, kick them out of South Athelion. And if they do go seriously wrong, I can always use this army movement from Gorgoroth to Minus Morgul um, and Nern to Gorgoroth. So, okay. So I attack. They obviously are not happy to see that. I think, yeah, so I guess they've been a little surprised by my Palantir play. Um, what are the odds that I have some attack with this? You know, I've only drawn four character cards and there are only two that would let me attack like this ring rates are abroad and black captain command. So I don't know, maybe you just hope that they don't have it because if, yeah. Okay. Anyway, I played black captain commands. I had it. And I, I don't know, I think I probably would have played the whole turn differently if I if I knew that I wasn't going to get an extra attack there because I definitely want to keep this army um, fairly well contained to the extent that I can. All right, I play 
Uh, character card, right. I'm going to play Words of Power. That seems good to cycle Aragorn. Um, turn off Aragorn. They play uh, Shield Wall. I missed the fact that they played Amaral of Dol Amroth here for a long time. Um, and they've already played Cirdan Ships. So now they have no way of reinforcing Dol Amroth once I get it under siege. Um, yeah, I might have been tempted to play Faramir's Rangers. Like, there's just no way that this... I don't think there's any way this can hold this can hold as Gilead. Uh, I just have 11 hit points to, you know, I have 11 hit points to six. That's a huge, plus I have one more leadership. Okay, anyway, words of power. I obviously cancel Aragorn. I get one hit, and uh, they get three hits back, which is very good for them um, on that number of dice, but it's still not enough because now I have eight hit points to their five, and now I'm hitting on fives and sixes because it's a... Um, Fort. So uh, yeah, they. I don't think they can stay. All right. So they re they retreat and they go to um, dead marshes. That seems fine. Um, they do have another scouts in hand, and I don't seem to have swarm of bats yet. But I might have also been tempted to go to Druidan Forest and meet up with Rohan. It's it's really hard to know. Is this army going to be big enough to do anything, given the amount of armies that I have in this vicinity? All right, uh, so I get to redraw. I'm obviously using the Witch King's ability pretty um, happily. And uh, and then I, wh while I could attack into Eastern Emin Wheel, if they have scouts, again, they can go to Dagger Lad. And I don't think that I want um, to attack Aragorn either, because if he has scouts and then draws in, and then has through a day and a night, they can go straight to Morinon. So I'm just going to use my armies to... Um, my army movement to just get armies into position a little bit better. So I move Nern to Gorgoroth and then West to Rondor to Pilargir. And I'm very happy to be able to start taking over Gondor. Obviously, I'm a little worried about Dead Men of Dunharrow with Aragorn um, annihilating this army in Pilargir. So I'm going to try and move on to Dol Amroth as soon as I can. Uh, but we'll see. All right, next round. Uh, they get... We prove the Swifter... And Wisdom of Elrond. Okay, these are these are good cards. Uh, Wisdom of Elrond maybe not super useful, but um, Confusion can be pretty nice. What would you get rid of here as uh, as free people? I would say maybe Faramir's Rangers, maybe Wisdom of Elrond. Those are my top two to consider. All right, they get rid of Wisdom of Elrond. That's fair. I'm very happy to see um, orcs multiplying again. So uh, that lets me now consider moving out of Dol Golder. Uh, and uh, it's always nice to be able to reinforce Mount Gundabad. I have to be careful about my force pool. I'm, I'm fine. But like I don't have an unlimited number of orcs. And there are situations where if you're not actually attacking in sieges like Minas Tirith, then you end up running out of orcs. So there's this a very fine balance between um, playing too aggressively uh, or not aggressively enough. Because I do have to keep putting military pressure on the free people. I have to whittle down their armies. And if I wait forever, eventually they can move very slowly with the fellowship and, and eventually, potentially, um, get a ring victory. So um, I allocate no eyes and, um, and I roll none. So obviously this is an incredible roll for me. Uh, very good. We'll see what they get. They get only one movement. So, you know, this is not good for them. Um, you know, they they want to be moving the Fellowship and killing off Gandalf, I would think, and um, and mustering up. These Palantirs, I think, are going to be a little tricky. I don't know exactly how they use them effectively, but mostly they want me to just be rolling more eyes and uh, fewer musters. I think... You know, these are, I have a lot of army movement. I don't know. Think about what you would do here as Shadow on this turn. Um, they pass, and now what do I do? Like, I can do tons of things. Um, I would like to take care of this army in Dead Marshes. I'm worried about um, scouts because they've drawn half the strategy deck, and I still do not have a swarm of bats. So I have to be wary of, of scouts through a day and a night, something like that. So I can't attack either of these until Morinon 
is taken care of. So what I end up doing, I, I, I'm tempted to go after Woodland Realm. Um, so what I end up doing is mustering in South Rune and then mustering again another Elite in South Rune. And I'm trying to use all of my uh, Force Pool thoughtfully. Uh, I want to be careful of mustering too many uh, Elite um, Sauron units because I've been holding Hill Trolls for a long time so that if my opponent ends up besieging Moria, I can turn these two regulars into Hill Trolls. So I, I kind of have to be considering these things. All right. Now they, at this moment, I'm not sure exactly why now, but uh, they go ahead and play Book of Mazarbal now. So now Dwarves are at war. North is at war. Like, I would love to take out Dale and and Woodland Realm before it has a chance to muster up a bunch. Um, they move Strider to, uh, or Aragorn, excuse me, to Edoras. And now I'm like, oh man, I probably should have moved out of Pilar gear sooner because now if he has dead men, he uh, can potentially inflict a bunch of damage in Pilar gear before I have a chance to besiege uh, Dol Amroth. So, um, yeah, Dwarves at War. Also now, I can think about getting the Mouth of Sauron because if I put Rohan to war, I can get the Mouth and uh, and get my 10th die if all of the free people and nations are at war. All right, so Book of Mazarbal, very nice play. And uh, they get to redraw. Oh, Gandalf is still Guide. Did they not? redraw oh i missed that so they had the option to redraw maybe they intentionally didn't redraw interesting so they did not use gandalf's guide ability there i'm guessing that was unintentional but maybe maybe it was intentional because they have so many cards all right I move armies. I move one regular from Minas Tirith to, to Lasarnach because I don't want to make it too easy for Gondor to muster. And then I move Pelargar to Lamadon and just hope that they, that my opponent doesn't have um, Dead Men of Dunharrow yet. If they have Dead Men of Dunharrow, which is a one out of four chance, they can come into Lamadon, they can annihilate this army, and I'll have to retreat to Pelargir. Not great, but... At least it's out of the way, and then I can just, you know, build up and muster up and come back. So, and I do still have armies in Gorgoroth, uh, you know, to be able to reinforce there. And um, and the thing is, with Dead Men of Dunharrow and an action token, you can, as free people, guarantee that you take Pilar gear at the end of a round because you can guarantee yourself the last action of the round and then you can play Dead Men of Dunharrow. And as long as you have at least a, a one Gondorian regular, you can retake Pilar gear. And so you can sort of guarantee stall one victory point away from, or take one victory point away from uh, Shadow. So I guess my thinking is I don't want to see Dead Men of Dunharrow, but if I did, I also wouldn't really mind being rid of it. So that's my thinking here. Okay, uh, but they don't have it, and instead they muster an elite in Dol Amroth. And um, yeah, you know, I'm I'm happy to see that. I would have been even happier if I had remembered that Imrahil of Dol Amroth is gone. Because now, like, this is a great siege. You know, one of the things that happens often with free people uh, military attempts is that it's very hard to find any strongholds that are easy to capture. So this is relatively doable, I think, for me to capture it. Um, all right, so I move armies. I split Gorgoroth um, to Mornon and to Minus Morgul, and my plan is to merge up Minus Morgul into the Witch King and then start attacking Bormir and uh, just clear out this army because I don't want them mustering up Gondor, just causing trouble. I need to eliminate these armies, and then I will move on to taking out uh, Gondor. That's my plan. All right, so... I move armies and I move the South Rune army to Ash Mountains to come west and help out and reinforce here. My thinking is I can merge up uh, Ash Mountains and Morinon in Daggerlad, still leaving one behind in Morinon, and then just march this really nice army with three elites and seven regulars to wherever it needs to go, maybe into Rohan, maybe up north 
Um, I had a lot of attacks this round, and it would have been nice to be able to take out Dale or Woodland Realm while um, free people were, you know, worried about other things. But I kind of don't want to make a mess up there and just focus on Gondor. We'll see. So at this point, Jason attacks into us, Gilead. And uh, I guess he just really wants to play Fear Faramir's Rangers. Um, I would I would have been inclined to try and muster, you know, with this die, because the the North is at war, the dwarves are at war. As soon as you get more units on the board, um you can inflict more damage. So, all right. Anyway, uh, we'll see what happens. They uh, attack as Gilead. They get a hit and, um, and I don't get any. So my lone, my lone orcs in, uh, in as Gilead have not been doing very well. They're like, ah, they're coming from dead marshes <laughs> before these guys attack from Pilar gear to as and then ended up in dead marshes and then dead marshes <laughs> back to as And, uh, and the witch King is just like trying to, trying to clean up the mess. So um, obviously, I I don't super mind that. I mean, I I want to take care of this unit in Eastern M and Wheel, but now that I have Morin on and minus Morgo covered, like I'm probably okay. This is a very tricky situation because now I don't actually have an extra attack with this Palantir. I don't have Ringwraith Star Abroad, and I don't have any rings. So if I attack into Asgiliath, and then they um retreat to South Athelion. They can use a Will of the West to attack into Minus Morgul. And then I would play something like, uh, oh no, I, then if I attack them with my other die, then they could use scouts at that point to go to Gorgroth or possibly um, if I don't attack them because I'm worried about scouts, then they could use day without uh, through a day and a night to take Baradur and I don't have mustering. So this is very, this is actually like pretty precarious. And I guess my thinking is I don't want them to get a stronghold right now. But if this army goes and gets a stronghold, I still have enough units probably to come and deal with them next round. And and I still have hill trolls to reinforce um, Moria, and there's no other stronghold. And I have orcs multiplying again to reinforce Mount Gundabad. So there's nothing that they can immediately take. So I'm I'm probably okay. Uh, so therefore I attack in. Like I I'm worried. I see the risk, but I attack in anyway because I I can't let this army just sit here and go back to Pilar gear and. You know, there could be help unlooked for, there could be Faramir's Rangers, a bunch of things. So um, I attack into Asgiliath with the Witch King cleaning up after the mess of the orcs. I play, um, I don't know, I guess I play Foul Thing. I don't want to give them extra hits, uh, and I would be happy to cycle into Ringwraiths or Abroad at some point. So yeah, Foul Thing, that's good. I I'm happy to give myself extra hits without giving them extra hits on me. Because where things go wrong is when I get an unlucky roll, they do a bunch of hits against me and I don't do a bunch of hits against them. All right, so I get three hits here, which is obviously above average for um, attacking into a um, fortification, even with their, ta their they're terrible. It's still, I think, I'm pretty sure that's above average. Um, I would expect something like two there. And I got three. They get um, three back at me, which is also above average for them. But it's not enough. And uh, now, you know, that's that's pretty harsh for them. So I um, I obviously press the attack. I thought about not. I thought about not pressing. But I want to um, whittle them down. I want to flush them out. And now I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm even if these are units get to go in to Mordor. There's only two of them. I can take them out. So I press and I move one in. I want to keep a big army in North Athelion so that I can try and eradicate this army in South Athelion and I can try and take care of the army in Eastern Emin Wheel. So there we go. All right. I get to redraw. And now um, they play Guards of the Citadel because what else are they going to play? And uh, they wait for me. Okay. They redraw into Celeborns. Useful. And um, yeah, what would you attack here as Shadow? Like, I, I, my my thinking is um, I'm going to attack this army in South Athelion 
because if I don't, they can move to minus Morgul and then at the start of next round, and I won't be able to attack them. And then at the start of next round, they'll be able to um, move into Baradur. And because I know I don't have Swarm of Bats, I also don't want to let them attack. I don't want to save my character die because then they will, uh, if they have scouts, they can scouts to Gorgoroth out of minus Morgul. So, all right. Anyway, I uh, attack South Thelian to North Thelian, and now, now they play um, scouts. So, um, yeah, that's how it goes. Um, and I don't move in because I, I'm thinking, oh, I want to be able to take out this army in Eastern Emin Wheel, and I don't want to put myself in South Athelian if they're going to end up retaking Asgeli. I, I don't know. I'm not sure why I really care too much. Um, yeah, I guess just it gives me options to take out Eastern Emin Wheel. If I roll a whole bunch of character and no army movements. All right. I redraw breaking of the fellowship and then um, they move the fellowship here. Yeah, that's interesting. So if they had separated Gandalf a long time ago, they could have gotten him now. Hard to know. Um, also, I'll note that um, they could have moved into Pilar gear and retaken Pilar gear and then started mustering up more in Gondor. I might have considered that. Okay. Um, but they move and it's good to move the fellowship. And I play a red tile because what else can I play? Uh, I could play orcs multiply again, but my thinking is I'd rather save that for a surprise and uh yeah so there we go i play a red tile maybe someday they'll make it to mordor all right um i get morgul wound and pits of mordor i'm very happy to see pits of mordor it's a very very flexible uh defensive card as long as i have at least one unit uh they besiege the stronghold and then i add two more and uh it's just it's great in Mordor, like it is not unlikely in a free people military victory attempt that they will go after Mordor at some point. And so Pits of Mordor is just an incredible defensive card. So I, though Desperate Battle is obviously a very nice combat effect and in a normal game where free people are trying to destroy the ring, I will ver be very happy to play this for a combat effect. I'm like almost certainly saving this to play it as a card effect when I need to. And I'm assuming I'm get getting rid of Morgul Wound because Dread and Despair can be useful. Yeah, Morgul Wound. Okay, so I have to allocate an eye because they moved. I roll one more, and I get this very, you know, nice roll. Um, four, five very flexible attacks. And, uh, okay, so they get um, two Wills of the West. I'm a little surprised here. Uh, you know, you don't want to lose. You definitely don't want to lose uh, two Wills of the West. So I guess they have to use it. And yeah, so interesting. Here they're retaking at this point, but I might have been tempted to retake earlier. Um, also, maybe you just give up on Boromir and uh, and get Gandalf because you can get Gandalf this turn. If you move once and then maybe use a ring to move a second time, uh, you can kill off Gandalf and get him this round. I mean, maybe I have Day Without Dawn, but maybe not. I would, I would still... I would be more inclined to move the fellowship right here. Um, okay, and they and they go back into Lorien when they have the chance. So uh, definitely wasted a little bit of their time coming out of Lorien. Okay. Um, so just to be clear, this army went Lorien to Dimrald Dale, then Dimrald Dale back to Lorien. Let's remember that. And uh, now I move armies, and at this point I'm like, okay, this regular can't do that much. Uh, they've used two scouts. Maybe they have a third, like certainly possible to have a third, but I will use the, this, um, South Run and Easterling army to take out, um, this regular. And just looking at the counting, I can get all the way to Rohan and get the mouth of Sauron this round by putting, by putting Rohan to war. That's my, uh, plan. So they muster an elite in, uh, Pilar gear, um, Maybe not. I guess I'm not too worried about the mouth this round. I don't want to rush 
to get to activate Rohan in terms of putting Rohan to war. So I guess I'm focused on taking care of Boromir first. All right, I play a character card. I just want to keep things nice and um, safe. And uh, and I'm just re remembering now, they discarded Mithril Coat and Sting quite some time ago. They, they've had really tough choices with the discards because you know they saved two scouts, which I think was very clever because uh, it let them do all this sort of shenanigans. But if they had also somehow maybe managed to save Mithril Coat and Sting, um, you know, they did have a hobbit down here for many of these battles against the Witch King. And so they might have been able to take out the Witch King, which in the end, you know, does hurt Shadow quite a lot. It slows me down because I don't get to cycle combat cards. I lose two leadership. And then, of course, I lose the, the die. And so the longer the game goes, the more valuable that die is. Um, all right. Anyway, I play Dread and Despair. I get uh, I get one hit. I get two hits, but they played Shield Wall. And uh, they get no hits against me. So I press, and now um, I take over Pilar Gear. They only have three hit points left. And, uh, you know, I have more attacks than them. So if they go back and forth in Pilar Gear, it's not going to really help them. They play a power too great. That seems totally fine. Um, yeah, what else can they do? Um, they, whoa. So Gandalf is guide with the Palantir. Did they intentionally... They so they could have again drawn an extra strategy card. Maybe they oh no, sorry, that that was no, that they did it right. They they drew a card because yeah, I was thinking Celeborns, but no, they play they played a card, they redrew. So that's exactly right. All right. Um I go ahead. Hey, I have a victory point. That's right. Um I attack into Boromir from Osgiliath because I just want to take care of him and move on to then my uh battle in Gondor, but uh, we'll see what happens. So they play Caliborns here as Daylight, but uh, I still get three hits. So, you know, maybe it would have soaked up one more attack. There's just not that many places Boromir could go. Um, and I would not have pressed the attack, I don't think, um, because I didn't want to have to chase them farther. So I would have just let it be. All right. Um, I get three hits, though, and they get two back. And... Uh, that's the end of that. And I'm, I'm, you know, looking at my force pool. I want to make sure I'm recycling my uh, orcs as much as possible. And also I'm happy with the muster choice in South Rune coming west because now I'm going to get to use up these units um, without having to stop while still leaving uh, enough uh, in the supply for Pits of Mordor and orcs multiplying again. All right. I, I drew into Palantir of Orthanc. I'm happy to see that. Uh, that's good. And Grand is nice in a normal game to play as a, a card effect. I don't know that I'm going to bother with it. Um, this game, we'll see. So I go ahead and move armies. I now am prepared to take out Minas Tirith finally. It's been a long time coming. And uh, then my opponent plays the Red Arrow. Obviously very nice to get to get uh, units in Edoras and advance Rohan towards war, and then they redrew for Gandalf's ability. Um, I muster an elite in Orthanc because maybe it's going to do something someday. I'm thinking if I go after Rohan now, I can uh, maybe next round I can get the Mouth of Sauron. And um, okay, I attack uh, Dagger Lad to Eastern Emin Wheel. I'm going to bring this large army into Rohan probably, and uh, that lone Gondorian falls. Uh, and now my opponent moves the Fellowship and uh, gets hit. So if they had moved earlier, they could have gotten Gandalf this round. They don't want to be revealed. They get revealed. Um, they end up uh, taking a random... They lose Gandalf and then decide to not go into Moria, so they go to Goblin's Gate. Okay. Um, Fellowship is going super slowly. What what can you do? Um, I, I personally would be happy to lose Gandalf and uh, try and make some military progress. I play Palantir of Orthanc. It's always a nice time to do that when they're also trying to get a Will of the West for Gandalf, so uh, that's nice for me. Day Nine Foot's Guard and Horn of Gondor, they're probably happy to see um, Mighty Attack. That can be a useful combat card. 
and uh, I draw, let's see, Monsters Roused, Flocks of Crabane. I probably get rid of Monsters Roused because would I rather give everybody plus one on attack and leader or just me on attack, on leader? So I think I probably get rid of, all right, never mind. I got rid of um, Flocks of Crabane. Okay, that's fair too. I do at some point want to cycle into the other um, mustering cards for free people. I mean, for Shadow, uh, I have to allocate an eye because they moved. And uh, I roll one extra eye, and they get a bunch of movement. I don't know that they want a bunch of movement. Um, at least they get Gandalf. So Gandalf is now in Fangorn. I muster... An elite in Dol Golder. So my, so what I know, yeah. So they definitely want some amount of um, mustering because what's what's going to happen now is I'm using these musters in Dol Golder and I'm going to go up and attack Woodland Realm. So they didn't, you know, they never mustered in Dale at any point, even though the North has been at war for a while, and uh, you know it's unlikely to get no musters, but the elven force pool is also quite low they just don't have many units left all right um so i muster again in dol golder and then i move armies and my thinking is i can move these armies and basically try and attack woodland realm and uh get rohan to war i don't think i quite calculated exactly right but Eastern Emin Wheel to Western Emin Wheel and Dole Golder to Eastern Mirkwood. Um, and now they use a ring, which is a Palantir. I might have been tempted to use a character die, but maybe they just want to move. All right. Um, to muster in Dale. That's obviously pretty painful. Uh, and then I continue to move my armies from Western Emin Wheel to East Emnet, and then from Eastern Mirkwood into Old Forest Road. And now I'm threatening to put um, Woodland Realm under siege with basically no extra reinforcements, even though the elves and the dwarves and the north are all at war. So they had to spend a ring and a character die to move um, to defend Woodland Realm. And now Woodland Realm is nicely defended. Um, and now what would you do here? So... I would like to uh, threaten Aragorn with this big army in Eastamnet. Um, I also would be very happy to get um, Helm's Deep under siege. I would also be happy to take over Dale. So, um, so I end up uh, just moving. I, I oh, and I want to uh, get the Mouth of Sauron. So it's hard to know exactly what all I should do here. Um, I put Rohan to war because now there's a very tough choice for free people about what they're going to do. Um, does Aragorn run away? Um, so I, I definitely want Dale, but okay. Rohan is now at war. I have a regular enfold and a, a large army in West of Net. They attack out of Edoras into fold. Um, Okay, we play no cards. They get a hit. I get none. My lone units uh, can't fight. That's fine. And uh, and now this is tricky because I could get the Mouth of Sauron right now. I would also love to take over Edoras. They uh, moved out of Edoras all of their units but left Aragorn behind. So now Aragorn is totally safe. Uh, I can't uh, I can't get him. So. So what do you do? What I ended up deciding was to move a, a regular into Edoras just to take that mustering point over. And um, and then so that way next turn I can besiege Helm's Deep or at least consider besieging Helm's Deep. And I also have a ring, so maybe this character die can be used to muster the Mouth of Sauron. I don't know. I end up moving only a regular into Dale. Maybe it's dumb to bother trying to take it, given that the dwarves and the elves and the north are at war, but it does slow them down. I would love to be able to maybe take over Carrick and then besiege Woodland Realm or try and sneak into Erebor. I could have, you know, snuck into Erebor with only five 
regulars, but I didn't want to let this army get too far away from Dol Golder in case I need to reinforce or come back and help. So that was my thinking there. All right, they um, hide the fellowship with this action. And uh, I don't know, I might have been tempted to move Fords of Eisen to Helm's Deep. Um, you know, if I had, had still had a character die, I could have... Um, I mean, if I still had a Palantir, I could play Thranduil's Archers or maybe Dane or Ironfoot's Guard with the Palantir. Is hiding that useful? Maybe. Okay, I um, I use a ring now to attack Helm's Deep because um, if I can take out Strongholds cheaply, that is really good for me because I need to be making some military progress and I don't want to have to like get my units decimated. So I'm just trying to create unprofitable um, attacks for, for free people and, and make it um, and still try and make progress on my military. So I'm, I'm happy. I'm very happy to get um, Helm's Deep under siege with only a single regular in it. I don't like having to spend a ring for that. I don't like not getting the mouth of Sauron when I could, but the sooner I take over Rohan, the better. And uh, this is, I think, I think this is right. I'm not sure. All right. So they go into siege. Obviously, I leave one regular behind because I want to make it hard for the Fords of Eisen and um, Fold to join up. And that'll just slow them down a little bit. So, all right. I am happy to see Ring Wraiths are brought. A little tricky to know what to discard. Um, I get rid of Monsters Roused now and Shadows on the Misty Mountain. Usually a card I would love to keep. But I already have Hill Trolls and Pits of Mordor and Orcs Multiplying again. So I feel like if they attack Moria, I'm going to be okay. And I would rather um, keep Ringwraiths or Abroad as a flexible um, attack option with a Palantir. And I like Dread and Despair as, the, as like a combat effect and Deadly Strife as a combat effect more than the Onslaught from uh, Misty Mountains. So very rare that I ever discard Misty Mountains, but... Yeah, I'm not sure what what would be better to discard here. All right, they get rid of one Ent and um, Horn of Gondor. That seems pretty reasonable. There is a single regular Elven unit left, which they can use for Thranduil's Archers. That's kind of cool. All right, um, I allocate no eyes because they didn't move, and I roll three more. And uh, they get a very nice roll. So uh, maybe a few more character dice than they want. Um, they probably want a few more mustering at this point, but it's probably okay. Uh, they start by mustering an elite in, um, in fold. I think I'm going to take out Helm's Deep. So let's just take care of Helm's Deep. I get a six. They get a six back, but that's fine with me. I lose... I you, Usually... I'm inclined to save elite units and kill regular units, but I want to be able to remuster these uh, elite uh, elephants, uh, either in Umbar or possibly in North Rune. So that's why I'm I'm happy to take that hit and get the elite back in my force pool. All right, they played Dan Ironfoot's Guard here. That makes sense. And uh, and now I get the Mouth of Sauron. So I, I put him in uh, Minus Morgul with the idea that I can move move him to Minas Tirith at some point in the future in case Gandalf comes in, we prove the Swifter or something like that. Um, there are other options for where he could go, but that seemed like the best place for me. And um, then they attack out of Erebor into Dale. And I guess the thinking is they would rather muster in, um, in Dale. Okay. What's their uh, force pool? So they, they have two Dwarven elites. Is it worth using this Will of the West to, to muster up first? All right, I guess we'll see. All right, they get a hit. I don't get any back. That's fair. And um, I muster another elite in Orthanc. And my thinking is that these units can come out and... Uh, attack in Fords of Eisen, and then I can merge up and try and take care of this army in Rohan so that they can't uh, they can't muster 
anymore in Rohan. All right, King Brand's men. Okay, seems good. Path of the Woeses can be useful. And then I attack the Fords of Aizen. I play Deadly Strife because I want to take care of these and um, I think it's unlikely they're gonna play their last scouts here. And if they do, okay. Um, yeah. Um, so they play Nameless Wood and uh, get a total of four hits against me. So that is potent. And uh, I only move in one regular because this way they would need two ends to have any chance at defeating Saruman. And uh, this army in Helm's Deep is still big enough to be able to do what it needs to do. So I'm happy to just keep myself quite safe in Orthanc. And um, then they move the Fellowship and I miss. And I merge up in... Westham net. I leave one regular behind in Helm's Deep just in case. And uh, and then they attack from Fold back into Edoras, which surprises me a little bit. But sure. All right. I don't play a card. They miss. I don't get a hit and I retreat. And now they leave one regular behind in fold, I guess so that it takes an attack for me to get there. And uh, and I play Ring Wraiths or Abroad to attack out of Edoras because I would rather my opponent not be able to uh, muster up in Edoras and I just want to take care of this army. So um, I attack Edoras and I play... I'm pretty sure I play Grand here. Yeah, so I play Grand. I get one hit and they get none back. And now um, I take over I take over Edoras. The Palantir of Orthanc is still in play and has been in play. Uh, I think this is the first time I get to draw from it. And I redraw Horde from the East and then um, we go to next round. So they have six dice. Um, I was able to get rid of Nazgul Strike. That seemed like a pretty easy choice. And uh, I get to roll 10 dice, which is good. So they declare the Fellowship 1. And then um, I have to allocate an I, so I do. And then I roll four more. So that is exactly what Free People wants to see uh, when they're going for a military strategy. And... Um, you know, I'm only at three victory points. I guess four now. I'm, I actually have... Uh, do I? Yeah, I have four victory points now. So, um, and then they get this great roll with just a bunch of attacks. And if they had, um, through a day and a night, if they had another scouts, they might play this differently. But um, they start by moving armies. So they go Dale to Northern Rovanian, and um, Aragorn moves out a fold. So I'm not too scared of this army in Druden Forest. Maybe it's going to make it to Mordor. I certainly don't want to see through a day and a night. Um, so, yeah. But I guess they're worried about me attacking the Witch King into fold. All right. Um, it's nice for them to have six actions to my five. I, they're not going to win this round. Uh, they can't, I don't, there's no way that they have enough attacks for that. I don't think, but, um, it's possible that if I have another bad roll, re like very high eye roll next round, I could be in trouble. Um, so I've been saving these pits of Mordor and Orcs multiplying again and Hill Trolls. And I also, by the way, drew Ulug High, um, though there's only two uh, elites in the pool right now. So I, I have to be, I have to be thoughtful. All right. Anyway, I start by moving armies, um, and uh, I move from Edoras to Fold, and uh, Westamnet to Eastamnet. So if uh, free people, I, like, I definitely don't want to let them liberate uh, Helm's Deep, but if they attack Aragorn into fold, I can immediately re, you know, attack back 
um, from from Eastmnet and kick them out of Fold. So um, they're they're not going to do that, and they're just going to press on. So they move armies, and they move this army from northern Rovanian to southern Rovanian, and that's that's interesting to me. They could have gone after Dol Golder, but I guess their thinking is probably Shadow has orcs multiplying again. Or at least this army in Eastmnet can go deal with Dol Golder. So, all right. So at this point, um, I use the mouth and I um, attack into Dale. And my thinking is Erebor is undefended. And they have um, no muster dice. So because they just used they just used their mustard eyes. So maybe this was a little bit of a misplay on free people's part, either leave a regular in Erebor or um, save that army muster, noting that Dale the Dale uh, thing is an option. Now, I, I feel like they don't have scouts is honestly how I feel right now, because um, though there's a good chance that they would have it, it's not crazy that they could have drawn all three. Um, the fact that Aragorn has been running away makes me feel like they don't have it. And I guess my thinking is I'm going to attack into Dale. If I had like great host or something like that, maybe I'd play it. But if I had a swarm of bats, I would definitely play it to stop the scouts, but I'm going to attack in and then, and I'm using the mouth of Sauron's ability. And then um, if I, if I miss, then okay. I, it's still only a single regular in Erebor. That's, you know, better than nothing. Um, because Dane Ironfoot's guard has already been played. So I'm, I'm trying to balance defending my strongholds with still making military progress and trying to attack where they're weak. And it's not, it's very hard to find weak places, but if they choose to vacate it to go for a military victory, then obviously it creates weak, weak places. So, all right. So no card and my one Nazgul there gets a hit. Good job. MVP this Nazgul in Old Forest Road, way to go, um, because they get a hit back, but now, oh, and by the way, that hit, I lost a, uh, I downgraded an elite into a regular, so that now I have three elites, because I have Ulog High, and I have Hill Trolls, and I have Pits of Mordor, so, um, yeah, okay, so uh, now they have to do something um, about Erebor, I think, and so they they do. They um, use a ring. They're changing their Palantir into an army movement, and then they move Iron Hills into Erebor and Dead Marshes into North Athelion. And I'm not really worried about this army in Minas Morgul. I think it should be fine. Um, and I'm also happy to see them use the Palantir because now it means they don't have through a day and a night. Um, which is a little statistically unlikely because they've drawn, you know, five sixths of their uh, strategy deck. But, you know, I think if they had through a day and a night, they would have saved the Palantir to threaten to go minus Morgul and then just move immediately to Baradur. Anyway, I muster regularly into minus Morgul and then they attack minus Morgul and then I use um, Pits of Mordor, which I've been saving for the whole game, uh, or not for the whole game, but for a long time. Um, to just reinforce Mordor. So I have Barad Dur, I have Morinon, and I put two into the siege in um, in Minus Morgul. And, you know, can these six hit points take out five hit points? Like, I wouldn't think so. I feel pretty good. Um, so they attack into Minus Morgul, and, um, and they play... I, yeah, so the, the one thing about Shadow is that when you're defending in a stronghold, you often do not have useful cards to play. Like none of these cards are particularly useful. There may be, if I had a bunch of Nazgul, maybe some useful Nazgul cards, but all right. Um, so Sudden Strike gets two hits, which is pretty awesome because now I only roll three dice. They don't get any hits on their... Um, uh, combat roll and leadership reroll, but if you were going to pick when to get your hits, better to get it then. And uh, I get only one hit on my um, on my attack, and then they press, and uh, then they play Andril, 
And uh, bye bye, uh, Mouth of Sauron. I get two hits back, but uh, Mouth of Sauron has been defeated by Aragorn. So that's that was pretty awesome. I mean, that was just a really cool play by them. And uh, and maybe maybe I misplayed that. Maybe I should have been mustering more in minus Morgul. Maybe the Mouth of Sauron shouldn't have been in minus Morgul. Uh, you know, I could have put the mouth in Moria. I could have put the mouth in Dol Golder. There are other options, you know. How much did the mouth really help? Like, I did have two leadership there. Um, and it did do a couple of extra hits. So maybe it was worth that. I don't know. I didn't think that six hit points could take out five hit points like that. But they had good combat cards. I mean, Andril is just incredible, right? So, and maybe they didn't even need it. They did roll two sixes. So, um, yeah. So this is, this is a real problem for me. There are two victory points. And now if I do not get a good enough roll, uh, to defend Dol Golder next round, I'm, I'm in serious trouble. So, uh, I play and they still have a token. So like they could temporize and then make me take the last action. Um, oh no, I, sorry. I have to take the, I have to take the next action anyway, because I rolled four eyes. Right. So, um, okay. So I go ahead and, uh, muster an elite the normal way in Dol Golder. I think about it. Yes. And that's, that's definitely the right thing to do. I need Dol Golder to have some chances of holding while I deal with Aragorn in, um, in minus Morgul. And they move their army from Southern Norvanian to Southern Mirkwood. And, uh, and I'll just note, they could have been in Southern Mirkwood already, right? When they moved from Northern Rovanian to Southern Rovanian, they could have instead gone after, um, Dol Gulder right away. And that would have changed the tempo of this, um, whole situation. I don't think they could have gotten four victory points this round. Um, I just don't think they had enough attacks for it. Well, let's think about that. If they had already been in Southern Morkwood, then this die could have been attacking Dol Golder. And then that army movement that they used yeah so they they used an army movement but that got them closer to minus more yeah so they couldn't have gotten they could not have gotten to um four victory points this round very close very close but not quite um and now this is very tricky right this is the moment where i hope i roll some good dice um i'm happy to see uh, great host that will be effective at taking out minus Morgul. I think I'm fine to discard Shelob and, uh, they get brave stand, which can be useful. And, uh, I obviously get rid of Shelob because the fellowship is not making a lot of progress. I allocate no eyes roll two. And these musters are taunting me a little bit because if I had the mouth of Sauron still, I would be able to use them for army movement. Um, but, you know, this is probably okay. I can use these musters to, to maybe muster up in um, Mordor and go after um, Minus Morgul. And I'm happy to have rolled some Palantirs so that I can play Willa Kai, so that I can play Orcs Multiplying again, Hill Trolls, etc. All right, so they get only three attacks. That's a little below average. Uh, you'd expect four attacks because two-thirds of the die faces have... Um, an attack for the free people. Only half of the die faces for shadow have um, attacks. So for me, rolling nine dice, we'd expect four and a half attacks, and I got three. And we'd expect four attacks for them, and they got three. So a little low attack round for both of us. Um, but I do have a ring, which they spent last round. All right, so they have to be careful of Day Without Dawn, so they use a Will of the West right away and attack and still Golder. I've obviously been holding Orcs Multiplying again. There's no way I would have vacated Dol Golder in the first place if I didn't have Orcs Multiplying again in hand or at least something. Um, but they know that I played Pits of Mordor, so 
All right. Anyway, I do have orcs multiplying again, and um, that fills up um, Mount Gundabad and um, Dol Guldur. And, you know, my force pool is still doing okay. So I have these two elites that I can use. I'm, I'm definitely getting a little low on orcs, but um, I think it's okay. And now the Palantir of Orthanc lets me redraw, and um, the king is revealed. So, so this is you know, a good card to draw uh, this round. The king is in minus Morgul. So maybe let's go take care of him. He is very present in our borders. Um, and I wonder, like, did maybe free people could have gotten rid of the Palantir at some point? Um, but, okay, they draw a strategy card. I guess they're looking for through a day and a night because if they get through a day and a night they can move um legolas all the way to dol golder and then take dol golder so that would be pretty good um i muster an elite in berdur and my thinking is uh i have one more elite. This is going to be okay right now in um, Dol Guldur. And I'd like to have this extra elite to be able to uh, have an extra round of combat against Aragorn. I pr I should be able to do two, two damage. I have Great Host. I have Deadly Strife. Um, I should be able to, but we'll see. All right, so... Um, we move like this. Uh, they pass. I move armies. So now I have six hit points in Golgoroth. And um, then they... Uh, let's see what they do. They play Thranduil's archers. And their thinking is they have a 50% chance of drawing through a day and a night. They still have not drawn through a day and a night. So extremely unlucky to have it so, so late in the strategy deck. Um, but they play Thranduil's Archers so that they can draw a strategy card and therefore use the Palantir. And if Aragorn can hold Minus Morgul, then they can use a Palantir uh, for Through a Day and a Night to get to South Anduin Vale. Then they can use the Will of the West to get into Dol Guldur. And then they can use their final die to attack in Dol Guldur. And certainly Legolas combined with this gigantic Dwarven army is enough to take out Dol Guldur, even though it has six, six hit points. So um, this is just a great play by Free People. And it's very tricky to... Um, it's like not so obvious for Shadow what I should be doing. Like I could be coming with this army in Eastamnet and attacking Dol Guldur. Maybe that would have been the right thing to do. Um, I felt like taking out Minus Morgul was better. And I was worried about, um, I think I was worried about scouts followed by uh, going after uh, Moria. Maybe not. Um, right? Yeah, no. If I if I attack into... If I spend my time attacking into Dol Guldur, then this army can retreat after the combat to with scouts to South Anduin Vale. And then they use the Will of the West to merge up in Dimmerdale. Then they use the Character Die to attack into Moria. And then their final ring to attack into Moria. So um, my thinking is I have to... It, it is most efficient probably to take out Minus Morgul. There are only two regulars here. Yes, there could be Heroic Death. Yes, there could be Daring Defiance, but it's only two. Like, I can, I have some chances of rolling sixes. All right, so anyway, um, they do draw finally through a day and a night, and now their plans are alive. Um, I attack Minus Morgul, and they think for a long time what to do here, and I, I meant to ask them... Um, why they were thinking. I I think maybe they were playing around um they were they were possibly playing around um King is revealed. Because if they go into siege here, then um 
I can play King is Revealed. If instead they have a field battle and they play Heroic Death, then they can kill off Aragorn. And now I don't, like I only have this little army to take out, um, to take out these two regulars and that could easily not work. Um, so yeah. Okay. Um, I attack, I say <laughs> for the mouth for vengeance and, uh, because Aragorn took out the mouth and, um, yeah, so they end up going into siege. I don't know. Maybe it would be worth it to talk with him after the game or I'll, I'll follow up with him later to find out. Was he thinking about playing around um, the king is revealed with heroic death? All right. So they do play through a day and a night. At this point, they go ahead and um, they go ahead and uh, use their will of the West because they don't want to risk day without dawn. And uh, there is power too great. So, um, so that's that. What's interesting is they did not even leave a regular in Lorien. I might have been, they literally have nothing left in Lorien. So I guess their plan is just to hold, um, hold minus Morgul and definitely win in Dol Guldur. But does that one extra regular make that big of a difference in the upcoming combat? Like, I, I don't think so. Also, why give Shadow a chance to attack into Westrim and Wheel? I guess it just... It like baits the, the attack. All right, I um, I play the king is revealed and I get my um, Nazgul so that now I can use this uh, character die as an attack and I can use the um, the ring to attack with this uh, muster. So if Aragorn had died, I would not have I would have had one fewer attack. Uh, because the the character die would not have been able to be used to an attack. The king is revealed lets you get a Nazgul. Uh, so that would have been that would have been a very interesting play um, to have the field battle. And he thought for a long time about the field battle. The risk is, of course, I get five hits, or um, yeah, that's <laughs> that's the risk, really, right? Um, okay, so. Yeah, what do we do here? Um, he moves armies. This this is army is now a fifteen hit point army with four leadership and a companion. Uh, there is no way that uh, I mean, just incredibly unlikely that Dol Guldur could hold. Um, so my thinking is better to devote. Like I could play, I could have saved a Palantir, and I could have played Hill Trolls in here. Um, but I only have one orc left and I have no, no regular orcs, no, um, regular orc units, which is pretty, pretty cool. That does not happen very often. I was planning around it. I was looking out for that pretty carefully. And, um, I am a little worried that this elite cannot downgrade into a regular right now. That is notable, but it probably doesn't matter. This army is just too big. I have to take out minus Morgul. So if I do not take out minus Morgul on these two dice, then free people win a military victory because like this army is definitely taking out uh, Dol Guldur and I just don't have anything in the vicinity to retake it. And maybe I should have, um, maybe I misplayed this turn as Shadow. I don't know. Um, I didn't have that many attacks. I only had three attacks. So I guess that's what I was... That's what I was worried about. Um, okay, I attack into minus Morgul. Let's see if I can take out Aragorn. Uh, Aragorn plays, I play a strategy card first, and then they think for a second, and they start by playing Daring Defiance. So that's very nice. That cancels my great host. Um, strong play. Uh, I roll two sixes. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, uh, that happens. So, sometimes that's just how it goes, right? Like I, even with this good card play, um, you still sometimes lose. Obviously he would have played heroic death next round. I would have played, um, I would have played uh, deadly strife next round. 
if I when I pressed, and then I would have had one more chance to try and do it. So like, it's just it's hard to have enough hit points. There were just two hit points there. So like, yeah, hard hard to defend that. Um, I don't know if there was more mustering that was possible. I think this was played quite well. I mean, I never expected the six hit points of Aragorn's army to even be able to take a stronghold in the first place. Uh, so, yeah. Um, so, there we go. Um, they get no hits back. And I wouldn't have minded a hit there because if I got a hit, then uh, I could have a regular in my pool uh, for that elite to be able to downgrade, but it probably doesn't matter. All right, so I get them down to zero victory points temporarily, and then they attack into Dol Golder with their last ring. And, uh, yep, so they play Aomer, they get two hits, I get three back. They don't, they stop playing cards, they get a hit, I get one hit back. They press, they get a hit, I get no hits back. They get two hits, and I get none. So, um, you know, they end with eight hit points here. This is obviously a monster army. Very hard to, um, you know, for, for me to retake Dol Golder at this point. But uh, if they leave Dol Golder, I will be able to retake it. So this army sort of is stuck here. And I think that's the benefit of leaving this army in Eastamnet. I was a little worried about them coming down towards Orthanc. I was a little worried about, you know, I still want to defend this Helm's Deep territory. Um, they are going very slowly with the fellowship and I just took out Aragorn and they've used up all their rings. So at this point, it's probably just clean up. Um, that was their best chance of winning if Aragorn had held. And there, there really were real chances for Aragorn to hold. And I think, you know, they had a very slow start militarily because it took them a while to get Aragorn and to get Gandalf. And, and I think this just shows the the power of the free people military attempt. Uh, it's tricky, but it's very real. And uh, if I had had one more round of bad rolls, they would have, um, they could have easily won this round, right? Like this was the round that they were going for it. Um, but now uh, I get rid of Power Too Great and uh, I get rid of Nazgul Search and Ulog High because I still have Hill Trolls. And um, now I'm going to just take Lorien. There's there's no way if they go to South Andrew. Yeah, there's no way that they can get to Lorien before I do from East of Net. And they literally have nothing, no elves to muster. So yeah, just I'm going to get, I'm going to get Erebor pretty cheaply and I'm going to get Lorien pretty cheaply. And that's, and then the game's going to end is basically what's going to happen, I I think. That's certainly my plan at this point. And now I drew Corsairs on top of that. So I'm like, okay, and I can take Dol Amroth. So even if I, you know, yeah. All right, I allocate no eyes. I roll one. And uh, they get, you know, this is a good roll. Uh, you know, fine. But they start by passing. I besiege Erebor. I probably would have mustered an elite in Erebor just to, you know, make it a little bit harder to take. Uh, and you don't have any rings, so you know you are going to be using that muster as a muster. Um, they pass again. I take out Erebor. I roll a six. They don't get a hit back. All right. I move armies around. If they had started moving towards Lorien, I would have reacted and moved, to moved towards Lorien myself. Um, I want to bring a big enough army. And, and this is weird. I don't know. Maybe this is wrong. I wanted to bring a big enough army to defend Lorien so that it couldn't be recaptured early easily, but I also wanted to leave a big enough army in Eastamnet so if this army in Dol Guldur leaves, I can go retake Dol Guldur or retreat back to Helm's Deep and hole up in Helm's Deep because I don't want to let them... I, I mean, I'm fine either way. There's It's pretty hopeless for them at this point. Like, even if they go and kill the Witch King in Eastamnet, I probably don't even care that much because I can just muster up again and I'll be fine. Uh, the Fellowship is just going too slowly. Um, all right, so I split up my army. I'm going to go take Lorien. I now use this army um, that was in Mordor to bring it up and uh, just, you know, help out. Maybe I'm going to take out Minas Tirith at some point. Um, my plan is to use Corsairs and win this round. Um, I muster in Umbar. They go ahead and move a regular into Dale and then move into... Um... Oh, did they discard a Scout's 
okay, I thought they still had scouts left, but um, I, at this point in the game, I thought they still had one scouts. Maybe they just discarded the scouts when they had too many cards in their hand at one point. Um, okay. Uh, they retake Dale with a single regular, and then they move uh, away from Dol Golder to North Anduin Vale. And I guess their plan is try and take Moria. I mean, this is very last ditch, last ditch effort. Um, so I'm not going to let that regular in Dol Golder stand. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take that out. And I'm thinking to myself at this point, if they go, like they can't even go and retake Helm's Deep. Um, and I have Corsairs coming and I have Erebor and now I have Lorien. So my victory points are just skyrocketing now that they've sort of, they made their military attempt and now I'm cleaning up. Um, so they go towards Lorien. They now move towards Dale, knowing that they're going to have to, I guess, retake Erebor. I, I don't know what that's going to be. Um, I, I attack into Dol Guldur because, I don't know. On one hand, I want to take out, um, I want to take out Dol Amroth. But on the other hand, there's a chance that that wouldn't work. And then if this army in Timrel Dale takes out Moria, I end up losing. So I don't know exactly what's the highest probability. I mean, I'm like 90% to win this game, 95% to win this game, I think at this point. And so it's just about these minor optimizations to make that like 99% or 99.9% to win, um, you know. So I decide it's best to just take out Dol Guldur. If I take out Dol Guldur, then they can't win the game. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, they attack um, Moria, and then I play Hill Trolls in Moria. I'm just like, I'm going to power up as much as possible. If they, for them to win, they have to hold Dol Guldur and take out Moria. So, you know, I'm just going to do that. I'm going to hold Moria. I've been holding that for a long time. I made sure I had the um, elite units so that um, I was able to play that card when I needed to. Um, and that's that. I, I still have the Palantir in play. And so I get to redraw. Um, I'm happy to see Day Without Dawn. It, you know, is a good combat effect and maybe it can stop them from a crazy roll. They muster uh, in Dale. And now, you know, I could win the game by um, taking out Dole Amroth. But if I don't, take out Dol Amroth, which is, you know, possible. Uh, and they somehow take out Moria. They win. So again, I am just playing it a little cautiously. So I attack, I, I attack, I use my ring to attack into Dol Golder. If, by the way, they had not saved this character die for their last action, um, I would have known what the situation was. And would have been able to either try and win the game in Dol Guldur, or, or I mean in Dol Amroth, or know that I had to retake Dol Amroth to stop them. Um, they had used their token this round, and that's why I was uh, th they were going to get to go last. So um, anyway, so I attack into uh, Dol Guldur. I have six hit points against a single lone <laughs> regular dwarf. I mean, I should definitely be able to take it out, and I have combat cards if I need to. I'm not playing combat cards. I'm going to roll a six. So um, they play Daylight, fine. Um, I don't roll a six, and they don't get a hit. I press. Um, I don't play any card. I'm going to roll a six. Uh, they play Daylight again, and um, I roll too many accidentally, and then I re-roll two for my leadership, and uh, I don't get a six. So I've rolled 12 dice, no six, and then um, they don't get a hit. So now I press again, and now at this point, like it is possible for them to win, by taking out Moria. Can seven hit points take out seven hit points? Like super unlikely, but they could have mighty attack. They could have, you know, they could have heroic death. They're like a bunch of things. So, um, so I just don't mess around and I play deadly strife. <laughs> I, I didn't want to have to play it, uh, but whatever. I, I don't want to risk losing the game by them taking out Moria. So I play Deadly Strife here, and I get a hit, and they get a hit, and now Dol Guldur is mine. So I'm definitely going to be able to get two victory points. They attack into Moria, and um, I play Devilry of Orthanc, which is rare to play on defense, but I can. They have Brave Stand. I get uh, two hits. They get only one hit. 
and uh, they stop because, yeah, what can they do? Uh, and now the game is over, basically. I allocate no eyes. I roll one. They get some dice, but, you know, it doesn't matter. They attack into Moria. They fail to do enough damage. I get two hits back. I still have five regulars, and they have three regulars, so uh, it's just not enough. I muster a bunch into Umbar in preparation for Corsairs. I move the Witch King into um into Dol Amroth, and uh, my plan is take out some, um, and I also move Nazgul into Erebor because their only opportunity to retake hit points is an Erebor. I mean, victory points is an Erebor, so um, I put four Nazgul up in Erebor for the eventual attack. And um, I move the Witch King to Dol Amroth with the plan that I'll do an attack and then I'll play Corsairs of Umbar and begin the attack again. So um, they muster into Dale. I attack Dol Amroth. I play Mumakil. Why not? And I get five hits. <laughs> so, all right. So I mustered way too much in Umbar, but I got ready in case, you know, just in case. It was, maybe my turn order was slightly wrong, but it you know it doesn't matter. Um, there was no way that this this army was going to hold. I had a total of nine. Pl I had nineteen hit points to throw at this and tons of attacks. So yeah, the game is over at this point. And um, they attack into Erebor. I start moving armies around because what else can I do? I guess I'll prepare to take Helm's Deep. Also, I mean Minas Tirith. Also, if at some point if they manage to retake Erebor. Um, they try to retake Erebor, but um, they can't. Um, I just have they. I just have too big of an army, and uh, and that's the game. So, yeah, I had four Nazgul and seven hit points against nine nine hit points or ten hit points from them. So, um, that's the game. It was turn twelve military victory for me. Uh, never ended up taking Minas Tirith. Uh, even though Denethor's Folly was in play the whole time. Palantir of Orthanc stayed in play the whole game. I got to draw a lot of cards from that. Um, and, you know, obviously in the end it was lopsided, but there was a point in the middle, like around turn 9, turn 10, where I was at, I was definitely at risk. So um, let's look at the statistics. Uh, I don't actually know if these are reversed or not. Uh, we rolled pretty similar number of combat dice. Sometimes these get reversed uh, and sometimes they don't. So either way, these are pretty balanced. Um, I was a little high on attacks, which was good. They were definitely high on Palantirs, which was bad for them. Uh, though it did let them, they had Gandalf for a long time, so it did let them cycle cards, but I think they would have preferred um, more mustering early on and Will of the West a little earlier. But overall, relatively balanced luck. I, I didn't feel like it was crazy. Their first turn was really bad, and maybe that's enough of a um, sort of snowball effect. If you have a really bad first turn, then it slows everything down and it delays the extra dice from Aragorn and, and Gandalf. They could have gotten the extra die from Gandalf a little sooner if they wanted to. Um, so a lot of interesting decision points there. I really enjoy these types of games where there's just many, many possibilities and, um, and we'll get the rematch. So in the rematch, I will be playing free people and, uh, and we'll see, we'll see how I do if my luck, uh, at the beginning of the game is a little better. So we'll see. Thanks for the game. Hope you enjoyed watching. Have a good rest of the day.